Today's video is on cellulitis. This is a very common, easily treated infection that if left untreated is potentially serious, can even be life-threatening. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian. In today's video, I'm gonna cover the five aspects of cellulitis. This includes number one, what is cellulitis? Number two, what are the signs and symptoms of cellulitis? Number three, what are the causes of cellulitis? Number four, what are the risk factors for cellulitis? And finally, number five, what is the treatment of cellulitis? First of all, what is cellulitis? Well, your skin has three basic layers. First on the surface is the epidermis. This is the outer layer. And then underneath that is known as the dermis. Next is the subcutaneous fat or the deepest layer. Now the epidermis is the waterproof layer, the layer that sunburns, that we all see, the layer that separates us from the world. Cellulitis is an infection that makes its way below this epidermis layer, below the outermost layer, and affects the dermis, that layer underneath, or even the fatty tissue beneath that. Cellulitis occurs when germs, and specifically bacteria, get into and under the skin. Normally, many, many types of bacteria live normally on a person's skin. And most of the time, these germs don't cause any problems. But if they get inside, there can be real trouble. Remember, cellulitis is an infection, but it's also important to realize it's not contagious. You can't catch it from someone near you or around you. But cellulitis can definitely spread and get much worse on someone who has it. For example, it can move from a finger up to the hand, into the arm, and up into the shoulder. Or, in special cases, it can even skip spots, starting in the hand and then showing up somewhere separate on the body, a new infection in another part of the body. So what are the signs and symptoms of cellulitis? Well, the hallmark of cellulitis is a red, swollen, and painful area of skin. And this can be anywhere. It can be in the eye or the orbit. It can be on the face. It can be very commonly on the hands and the feet and the legs. The infected skin feels warmer than the surrounding areas because of the increased blood flow and the immune response to the infection. And in some cases, cellulitis may result in blisters, pustules, and little abscesses that contain pus. Now this typically happens in more severe cases and specifically when the infection involves a bacteria known as Staphylococcus, which is known for producing pus. And in these severe cases, you can have fever and chills. Now one of the very characteristic hallmarks of cellulitis is that it's unilateral. That means it's only on one side. For example, if you have both legs or both arms that are red and swollen and warm, that's really really unlikely to be infection and unlikely to be cellulitis. It's likely to be something else. So what are the risk factors for cellulitis? Well, the most common bacteria that cause cellulitis are Staphylococcus and Streptococcus. Anything that compromises the outer skin surface allows these germs to enter. And these things include having a cut, even a tiny one, like from a sliver or from a staple on a piece of paper. Having other skin conditions or infections like psoriasis, or getting any sorts of bug or animal bites, even mosquitoes, or unusual things like handling fish. If you get a scrape on your skin, can cause cellulitis. Other things that are common, piercings on your nose, belly button, tattoos, eczema, and even athlete's foot are all risks for cellulitis. In addition, any sort of immune suppression, taking immune suppressive drugs, or being obese or overweight, very significant risk factors for cellulitis. So how do you diagnose cellulitis? If you think you have cellulitis, the area of skin that's red and warm and painful, you can usually just go see your physician as an outpatient. And one of the things to do is draw a black marker, a circle around the edge of the area of redness, and then watch it and see if it grows. That information is especially useful for your doctor. If you do see your physician, your doctor will usually get a short history and based on that and just a brief physical exam, either diagnose you with or without cellulitis. Rarely they might use a swab where they take a little sample of the sore 
or an area of pus. If they want to try and identify a very specific bacteria that's causing the infection, that specific identification will help them pick an antibiotic for your treatment. Occasionally the cellulitis is so bad, you need more than outpatient care. You need emergent care. Red flags that would tell you this include cellulitis with a rapid heart rate, a really high temperature, or if you're feeling mentally confused. In these cases, you should seek emergent care and if you can't get into your doctor right away, then you should really consider going to the emergency room. So once you've been diagnosed with cellulitis, how is it treated? Well, in most cases, your provider will give you a simple oral antibiotic. That's a pill to take by mouth for about seven days. Sometimes you may take two different antibiotics and you may have to switch types if the first one doesn't really seem to be helping. Elevating the area with the infection can really help with the swelling, which will speed up the healing. And occasionally, especially if the red flags are present, you may have to be admitted to the hospital. And then you will need antibiotics, not just by mouth, but through your veins. This is usually reserved for very severe infections. That's cellulitis. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to hit subscribe.